Hi everyone, I'm Alex and welcome back to another tutorial for CS50 Python. Today we'll get to piece set 3 and we'll get started with the fuel gauge problem. Let's firstly read the description. Fuel gauges indicate, often with fractions, just how much fuel is in a tank. For instance, one fourth indicates that the tank is 25% full, one half indicates that the tank is 50% full, and three fourths indicates that the tank is 75% full. In a file called fuel.py, implement the program that prompts the user for a fraction formatted as x slash y or x over y, wherein each of x and y is an integer and then outputs as a percentage rounded to the nearest integer how much fuel is in, a, in the tank. If though 1% or less remains, output e instead to indicate that the tank is essentially empty. And if 99% or more remains, output F instead to indicate that the tank is essentially full. If though X or Y is not an integer, X is greater than Y or Y is zero, instead prompt the user again. It is not necessary for Y to be four, right? This thing here is just an example, but it can be any other number uh, as long as it's not zero and as long as X is less than Y, right? If it's greater than Y, we reprompt. And here there's a tip, be sure to catch any exceptions like value error and zero division error. Now I think zero division error is pretty self-explanatory, you cannot try to divide by zero, so uh, this is a possible error that might happen uh, if the user inputs an invalid number for y. Value error on the other hand might occur if they enter something that's not really an integer and we cannot really convert it into an integer. So that's why we need to keep in mind both of these uh, potential errors. All right, here are some examples. Uh, let me go back a bit so that we can take a look. So when the fraction entered is one fourth, we convert to 25%, one half is 50% and so on. Four fourths or four quarters is basically just one, right? A hundred percent full. So instead we see F as an output and if we try to input 1 over 0, this is obviously not valid, we are reprompted. And then if we enter 0 as a fraction, then the result is E for empty. So that's how it should work. All right, I have already created my fuel.py file, so I'm ready to get started. Firstly, uh, it's important to note that we'll need some sort of a loop. And why would we need a loop here? Well, because if the user inputs an invalid fraction, we'll need to reprompt and reprompt and reprompt until they finally get it right. And then once they get it right, we'll break out of the loop. So the first thing that I'll write is just a while true loop. So the while true by default uh, works infinitely. And of course, we'll have some condition under which will stop the execution of this loop. Now, for each iteration of the loop, what would we like to do? Firstly, of course, we need the user's input. So I'll store it in a variable that I'll call fraction, and this will equal inputs. And here I can give some sort of a prompt to the user. I can say just like fraction colon, right? And we expect them to enter the fraction. And from here, we'll start, we'll try to split the fraction into two, we'll try to convert the two components into numbers and so on. But keep in mind that we have no guarantee that the user will be valid. And in case it's invalid, we will see some sort of an exception that we have to uh, handle, right? So whenever we are about to execute code that is sort of risky, um, we should better include it in a try in except block, right? So inside of the try block, I'll have all of the code that I want to test if it works. I'll enter it in a bit, but for now, I'll just move on to except, right? And oops, except like this. And here I can mention the potential errors that I expect or the exceptions that I expect. In this case, what exceptions could we get? We could get a value error if, for example, the input is not in the right format. And then we could also get a zero division error um, if it happens that the y, like the denominator of the fraction is zero. And in case we get any of these, what would we like to do? We would basically want to reprompt the user. So we want to get to another iteration of the loop where we ask for a new fraction and then we execute all of the code that we have to test. 
How do we do so? Well, we use an operator called continue. Continue. I cannot spell today. Oh my god. But continue, what it does is it just goes back to the beginning of the loop and it starts a new iteration, right? And that's what we want because in the new iteration, we'll ask for another fraction and we'll give another chance to provide a valid fraction. Okay, we got this. So what do we want to have inside of the try block? Firstly, the fraction should come in a format like this, 3 over 4, right? So our first, first task would be to split it into the numerator and the denominator, which in the context of this particular problem were named x and y. So this will be our x, this will be our, our y. And in order to split it, we can actually use the method, which is called split, and the separator between the, the x and the y is actually a slash, right? Okay, so I can say x and y will equal fraction, this is my original string, dot split, and I want to split by a slash, okay? Now, our next task, once we have x, which in our example would be equal to 3, and y would be equal to 4 as strings, of course, our next, next task would be to convert these into integers, right? Because if they're strings, we can't really do the division properly. So we just need to convert them into numbers or integers to be more precise. This is an easy task. We can just say x equals the integer version of the current x and y equals the integer version of the variable y, right? Okay. Now, there were a couple of conditions under which we should ignore the, um, the given values or just continue with the loop and reprompt, right? The first one is if x or y is not an integer. We actually don't have to worry about this because if they're not integers, it will actually throw an exception and we've already handled this exception. Another one is if y is zero. This is another natural exception that will be thrown so we don't have to care about it again. I mean, we've already taken care of it, actually. <laughs> and then the only one that we need to check now is if x is greater than y. Oops. If x is greater than y, we need to just continue. So continue with the next iteration and reprompt the user. All right. So I'll just add a very simple if statement. And I will say, if x is greater than y, then just continue. And again, what continue does is it just moves on to the next iteration, asks for a new fraction, and so on. But if everything is fine, if x and y are valid, what would we like to do? We would like to calculate this. So just calculate the division and turn it into a percentage, right? So we need x divided by y turned into a percentage. So I'll create a variable, which I'll call percentage, uh, percentage. And this equals x divided by y. But now keep in mind that if, for example, we have 3 over 4, the result of this would be 0 0.75, which doesn't really look like a percentage. If we want the percentage itself, we would need to multiply by 100. And I very often like to, to put some, um, some parentheses around the division. Not that we need them. The result would be exactly identical if, even if we didn't have them. But to me, it just shows me that this is my main division and this is just an additional operation to turn it into a percentage. Also, the, the problem description mentions that we should round to the nearest integer. So how do we do so? We use the round method. So I'll just write round and wrap the whole calculation inside of the round method. Fantastic. So from here, we are actually almost done. Now we just need to check if the percentage is 1% or less, we output E for empty, right? So I'll say if my percentage is less than or equal to 1, then I would like to print E for empty. Then on the other end of the spectrum, LC for elif, if the percentage is greater than or equal to 99, that means it's essentially full, so the output will be f for full. And lastly, in all other cases, anything more than 1 and less than 99, so else, we just want to print the percentage itself. And here, 
I'll use a formatted string in which I will first have the percentage itself. Percentage. This is just the inserted variable, right? So if percentage is 78, that's what we'll get here. And then after that, I just want to add the percentage sign, right? The symbol for a percentage. Okay. Uh, and once we're done, if this has been valid, we want to stop the, the, the loop, right? The loop repeats only if we get some sort of an invalid information. If it's valid, we just calculate, we print the result, and we break out of the loop. So that was the solution. Let me just quickly recap what we did. First, we began by writing a while true loop so that it could reprompt the user in case they enter invalid information. Of course, inside of the loop, we first read a fraction itself or the attempt for entering a fraction. And we try to split the fraction into two, numerator and denominator, convert them into numbers, integers to be more precise. Uh, in case the numerator is greater than the denominator, this is considered invalid. So we move on to the next iteration and we reprompt the user. But if everything is valid, we find the percentage and we output the corresponding information after which we break out of the loop. However, if it happens that there's something invalid, we'll get into the accept block and we'll just move on to a new iteration, reprompting the user for a new fraction. Let me just quickly test this. Okay, uh, I just noticed that I have actually forgotten the parentheses here. So if you have more than one type of error, you do need to put the parentheses. And now there's like no problem here. All right, and we, I think we're ready to test. So if I write Python uh, fuel.py and I enter three fourths, we get 75%. If I attempt to write four fourths, that's basically full. If I do zero over four, that's zero, so it should be empty. If I try with four over zero, I should get an I, I should be reprompted, right? Uh, let's try. Yes, oh good. Four out uh, two out of four, we get fifty percent, and we're done. It looks like it works properly, but of course we need to check with check fifty. So let me scroll down, copy and just run it to see if it works well. All right, as we can see, all the tests are green, which means that our solution is correct. I hope that this video was helpful and interesting, um, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.